I sold my house in Florida and moved to Hawaii to be with my brother Jacob and I guess help him renovate his house, but mainly because I needed a change in order to study for my dream job. Speaking of making a change, this portion of the video is sponsored by Zenhub. This could have been an email. Finally, someone heard this pain point and decided to do something about it. Zenhub knows that the people building amazing products and software actually want to spend their time building amazing products and software rather than being stuck in meetings. Zenhub is a productivity management platform that's directly integrated with GitHub, which just makes sense. Get real-time insights on how your team is doing on any given sprint. Now, Zenhub is packed with a ton of amazing features, but one of my favorite is planning poker. Some companies like to claim they're remote, but when you open your calendar, you see a dozen mandatory sprint planning meetings between 9 and 5. Zenhub enables actual remote work. Planning poker lets you vote on a story's complexity when it's convenient for you and only discuss it with your team if you actually need to. Companies like Gradle, Microsoft, and Adobe are already using Zenhub to gain context and clarity for greater project visibility. If your team is looking for a boost in productivity, check out the link in the description and get your first three months of Zenhub free. A house in the middle of renovations isn't quite the best place to study. So before I get into what I'm studying, why I'm studying, and how I'm studying it, let's head over to my local co-working space. Ooh. This is a really cool co-working space. It's called Treehouse Co-working in Kailua, Hawaii. All right. How to get these interviews. A crazy story. Without even sending out a single resume, I was able to get invited to interview with over like 40 companies. Three of those companies were from the Fang or Manga, Manga, whatever, and the other 37 were from like really cool startups and other types of companies. So instead of just going to all these companies' websites, going to the career page and clicking apply, sending my resume, I took a page out of Chris Sean's book and Colors of Chloe. Both of these two people did something crazy. They announced that they were available on the market and they showcased the skills that they have been accumulating over the years. So that's exactly what I did. I posted the hire me, or I call it the elevator pitch video on LinkedIn and uh, no nothing happened. So I posted that same video on Twitter and blew up. The video got about 100,000 views and that's where all of those invitations to interview came from. After being completely overwhelmed with all of the DMs that were coming in every second, I took a couple days to relax and sift through all of the direct messages and a couple of companies were really exciting and rose to the top. So obviously the Fang companies were pretty sick, so there's them. Out of the other 37 companies that reached out, Three were saying some really cool things in my DMs, so I'm definitely preparing for those three as well. I don't want to say the names yet because I, for right now, I'm going to keep it close to my chest in case I fail every single interview. <laughs> the position I'm studying for is not just like regular software engineering, it's developer advocate. For the longest time, I just wanted to be a software engineer, but since creating this channel and talking to all of you fine folks, I have decided that I really enjoy content creation and connecting with tech communities across the world. So that's what I'm going to pivot to, i.e. why I'm trying to study to become a developer advocate. Coding is definitely pretty fun, but I've enjoyed doing this a lot more, so why not try to do it full time? I've been, I've been struggling on figuring out how to go about my studying, but I think I finally got it down. There's like zero guidance on how to study for a developer advocate interview, so I've had to crawl around the internet and ask my friends that are already developer advocates. And from everything that I've gathered from begging my friends to tell me the answer to the interviews, it boils down into like two main buckets. The first main buckets are the Fang type of interviews. Of course, they're going to hit you on Leet Code, Leet Code easies, mediums, and maybe hard. But on the Fang side, they're really interested on how you talk through and communicate your solutions to the problem because that's what you're going to be doing if you get the job, talking about technical things and making it clear to understand to other folks. When I was working with the Space Force in Santa Monica, a Facebook recruiter hit me up and he was super blunt with me and I respect that more than anything you could ever imagine. He said that since I'm a self-taught engineer, the hardest part of these interviews is going to be the data structures and algorithms. To get a better understanding of data structures and algorithms, I went over to my favorite platform, which is Udemy, and then I went to my favorite instructor, which is Colt Steel, and I signed up for his data structures and algorithm course. I took my time with it. It took me about eight to nine months to get through. I really think I got a nice, deep understanding of DSA. If you're interested in my notes I took during that course, I put them all on LeetCode. I'll leave the link to my DSA practice in the description or some 
I'll put it somewhere. I finished that course three months ago and I felt really good about myself because you, you finished a course, you feel good. But then I tried to do a leak code easy and um, it, w it was demoralizing and humbling because I, I couldn't get through it. I didn't know what to do. I was very upset. I was like, I just did a nine month course. Why can't I solve leak code easy? So I think I found like a study pattern that's super helpful. So I hopped over to leak code. I got the premium edition and I've been working my way through the easies and through the mediums and so on and so forth. But what I do differently than just getting demoralized, I set a like a timer on my phone. Let me see if I can find it. There's this forest app on my phone and I'm not going to do it now because it locks your phone and you plant the tree and you can't touch your phone for 30 minutes, which is super great because sometimes I just like check to see if I have notifications and if you do like kills all the trees and makes you feel really sad. Anyway, I use that app and I work on a problem for 30 minutes and I, if I solve it in like 20, I try to optimize it. But if I don't solve the problem, which is more likely to happen. I go to the discussions tab. I try to look for a solution that's not written in my own language and that helps me not just memorize the solution and copy it over, but see what they're actually doing. For me, I write JavaScript primarily, so I look at like a Python or a Java example and then I convert it on over in my head. Like a genius. Well, a genius that can't solve easies. I just got a really nice email from one of the uh, companies I'm looking to Ooh. On the not thing side, they do practical take home assignments where you look at their API and you build something with it or explain a difficult concept that they would have you explain if you're working for them, which is definitely the type of interview that I prefer because that's exactly what I want to do and it makes sense to practice what you preach and preach what you practice. You know what I'm saying? So for my interviews that do that type of style, I'm just really looking up on their company, their problems, so I can talk intelligently about their product, which is what I'll be doing if I get hired. So I look through their APIs, I look through their business model, their core beliefs, and I try to act as if I already work there and communicate something to them at that level. Researching a bunch of companies, APIs, and what technology and tools they're coming out with has been really fun. So that's basically it on how I'm studying for the non-FANG technical interviews for developer advocacy. Well, I'm not sure if you could tell so far, but I have no idea what company I'm going to work for, but I want to be prepared for all those different types of company. That's why I came to Hawaii for the most part, is to lock myself in this room, this beautiful co-working space, and just study without a lot of distractions. Well, I thought before I had to build a whole entire kitchen. Anyway, I have no idea where I want to work, but I want to be prepared for all the interviews for the companies that I may might work at. So that's why I came to Hawaii to lock myself in this beautiful co-working space. I wish I would have gone to the beach a bit more, but we got to find a job so I can eat and provide for myself and whatnot because I'm in between jobs at the moment still. As I mentioned before, today is my last day in Hawaii, so goodbye to all of my three friends, goodbye to Treehouse Coworking, but I gotta go pack and catch a flight because we got a new adventure coming up, which I'm sure you'll see more about later.